All right, we just finished the, the fuel pressure testing, so let's see what else we can knock off on our list. Uh, so we just crossed off fuel pressure. Uh, let's do a vacuum test. Vacuum test, about as simple as it gets. So to do that, we are going to use a compression test kit. That's the vacuum. So this is the gauge that we're going to use. I think you can borrow a vacuum gauge from your local auto parts store, so you don't actually need to purchase this, but I have it anyway. So this is made by OTC. Uh, it is actually a vacuum and a pressure gauge kit. So as you can see on this gauge here, uh, on this side you have vacuum, you, on this side you have uh, pressure, which you can use to measure fuel pressure. If you have a carbureted S30, you can definitely use something like this to measure it. Uh, but as you can see, the pressure only goes up to 15 PSI, which is why I can't use this to measure um, fuel pressure, which goes up to 36 in this car. So hooking this up is really simple. Uh, there's a little adapter here that I can uh, put in here. And we're going to disconnect the brake booster and connect the gauge here. This is really the easiest place you can use to measure the vacuum. You can use some other uh, intake manifold holes, but this is really the simplest thing. So the vacuum level that you're looking for at idle is anything from 16 to 18. Anything below 16, you probably have a problem with a excessively worn engine or probably more likely a uh, vacuum leak. So I'm hoping to see something like 17 uh, people with brand new rebuilt engines report 17 or 18, something along that range. But since my block has never been rebuilt, if I see something above 16, I'll be happy. Again, anything below that, uh, since my compression readings came out okay, I'll be looking for a vacuum leak, which is not going to be pleasant. So, like I said, we have this gauge here. We're just going to connect this fitting that came with the gauge. And just plug it in. You really don't have to put a clamp around this. It should be tight enough that it's not producing a vacuum leak. So there it is, and there's the gauge, and we'll start up the car. By the way, um, just one more thing. You want to measure the vacuum when the engine is fully warmed up because if you're reading the vacuum when it's not, uh, you will be reading uh, lower vacuum readings because the, um, the compression rings on the piston haven't had a chance to expand yet and that will mean that your compression readings aren't as high and that translates to your vacuum readings not being uh, high as well. So uh, go ahead and turn on the car and just wait for it to warm up and you should be able to see that the vacuum gauge slowly moves higher. I don't know where it's going to start but uh, I'm guessing it's gonna start around 13, 14, and hopefully end up in 17. So, wish me luck. Warmed up, and we're seeing right around 
17 or 17 to 18 inches of vacuum. So that's fantastic. All right, that was very cool. Uh, for once, it did exactly what I expected it to do, which was when we turned on the car, it started at around 14 inches. And you saw that the, the needle was bouncing around kind of wildly in the beginning, but as the car got warmed up, it settled around uh, 17 to 18 uh, inches of vacuum and uh, the needle stopped bouncing around. It was a really pretty steady 17 to 18, so that's awesome. Now, if you didn't see the vacuum level that you wanted to, let's say you saw below 15 when the car was fully warmed up, there's a few different things that could be going on. So I'm hoping that you were following the series and did a full compression test. Um, so we can, if you saw a healthy compression across all cylinders and there weren't much of a variability in the compression readings between cylinders, then you can kind of check that off as a um, issue or a potential issue. Uh, it could be that your engine wasn't idling quite at 800, maybe it was idling at 650 or 700, which would cause you to get a low or low vacuum reading. The third is probably the most common. You have a vacuum leak somewhere, and there's a lot of different places where you could be getting a vacuum leak. One is a brake booster line. Uh, make sure that your gauge was connected tight and you have no vacuum leak at the brake booster. That's, um, that's, a, that's a pretty big one. Another one is coming from the valve cover to the intake manifold, you might have a vacuum leak here. Another one it might be the crankcase ventilation hose. If you have a vacuum leak here, it's kind of hard to detect because you don't really see that right away. Another place is all these vacuum lines from the throttle body connecting to the, um, the distributor and the, the carbon canister. So if you have really dry rotted uh, vacuum lines there uh, or here, you could be seeing a uh, vacuum leak. So one way to pinpoint out a vacuum leak is to use a, let's see, a starting fluid. So what you can do is turn on the car, and go ahead and spray the starting fluid at places that you think there might be a vacuum leak. If the engine tone changes, all of a sudden if the engine starts spinning faster, you know that there's a vacuum leak here or there because it's sucking in the starting fluid and using that as extra fuel. But for me, that was really all I needed to do. I have really pretty healthy vacuum, so I'm very satisfied and I can move on to the next one in the checklist. And the next one is, I think, installing the air fuel ratio, or I might do a oil pressure, I don't know. All right, see you guys next time.